Hey everybody, Ryan here at E-Trailer. Today on our 2021 Ram 2500, we're gonna be showing you how to install the Eco Hitch front trailer hitch receiver. But before we get into that, why don't we take a minute, check this out and make sure it's gonna work for you. Front hitches seem like they're getting more and more popular now and you can use them to do a lot of different things. Uh, whether you're trying to set up a snow plow up here or a winch, uh, those are really popular uh, things to do. And it seems to be, uh, you know, what a lot of people are starting to do is even use accessories up here. Uh, people are pulling their campers around and, and enjoying themselves and they're trying to look for some extra space that they can utilize to, let's say, carry some bikes around or maybe some type of carrier up here to uh, carry some extra cargo. So having this uh, on the front of your truck is really gonna open up your opportunities on what you're gonna be able to do. This hitch is going to work with the diesel engines as well as the gas models. And if you were to ask me, you know, what hitch would I put on my own Ram? Uh, I'd definitely lean towards this one really for a few different reasons, uh, you know, compared to some of the others. The first one being the clearance it's gonna give us. So this one sits up higher off the ground and a little more flush with our bumpers. So it's gonna work with a lot of uh, different types of things. And in turn, uh, it's going to look better as well because of that. You know, it's not going to be hanging all the way down here. And this one's also going to have some higher capacities, so a little more capable. And kind of going back to the appearance, so this is obviously how it'll be set up uh, whenever you're not using it. Um, but if you do have to have a front license plate, they even give you a holder here. So whenever you're not using an accessory, you can put this in. They give you a pin and clip as well to kind of lock that into position. And with it like this, uh, you're really not even gonna be able to notice that you have a hitch on the front of your truck. Since I did uh, mention clearance, we'll take a couple of measurements uh, to see what type of things will work best for you. And if you go from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening, that's gonna be about 17 inches. So honestly, that's high enough off the ground where even if whatever you use has a straight shank, you should be in pretty good shape there. And if you go from the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of our bumper, that looks, it's, looks like it's gonna be about four inches. So pretty good. And you can use that to help figure out if that accessory is gonna clear, or let's say if you have something that folds up, uh, you can use that to help you know, find out if you can fold it up and, and not have to worry about it hitting the front bumper. As far as the capacities go, uh, they're gonna be really good. The maximum gross tongue weight rating is gonna be 1,000 pounds. It's gonna be the amount of weight pushing down on the hitch. Uh, really high number. You should be good to use pretty much any accessory and even uh, the majority of the snow plows and things like that. As far as the maximum line pull, and the gross trailer weight rating. Now those are gonna be 10,000 pounds. That's gonna be the amount of weight pulling on the hitch. Uh, now I do always like to suggest, it's never a bad idea just to grab your truck's owner's manual. That way you can check in there and make sure I can handle that much weight safely. So at the end of the day, you know, if I was looking for a front hitch for my Ram uh, because of what we just talked about, this is definitely the one uh, I'd go with. And I do like how they really thought things through. You know, there's a lot of small things that give you small plugs here, and just some little odds and ends that kind of bring everything together and uh, kind of make it a, a nice, professional, complete package. As far as the installation goes, um, you know, it was it was time consuming. Um, it, you know, there's some bolts you have to get up under here and take out, and they're relatively big, so. Uh, some bigger breaker bars and sockets and things like that are going to be needed, but this is definitely something you can do uh, as long as you take your time and stay focused. Uh, with that in mind though, if you'd like to see how that's done, feel free to follow along. We'll go ahead, pull into the garage, and put it on together now. To begin our installation, we're going to be here at the front of our truck, and what we're going to do is remove our license plate uh, bracket if you have one. So this is just going to be held in place with four uh, self-tapping screws. So I grab my 10 millimeter socket, get all these pulled out. And this should just kind of pop off. We'll set that down to the side. 
And we're gonna have to remove this air dam piece here. So each side of the vehicle, or just on the sides there, we're gonna have a push pin type fastener. So you can take a trim tool like this or even a flat head screwdriver, pry down on the head of it, and we're able to get underneath the base. And I'll do the same thing for this one here. From underneath the vehicle, if you look at the seam here where our air dam deflector meets the actual metal bumper, uh, we're gonna have several 10 millimeter nuts holding that on that run all the way along and we're gonna have to remove those. So I got a socket here. And we'll just work our way all the way along the bumper bed. And if you happen to have, if your vehicle is set up or more in the center, if you have this deflector piece, uh, it looks like you are able to get to those uh, nuts from the front side. So the front side of your bumper has some, some slots in it. It looks like you can get your hand in there and, and get the nuts off that way. So on the front side, this is what I was talking about through these openings. You can get your hand up there and get a socket through it to get those nuts off. Once you get them all off, though, this is still going to be held in place. And because on each side, there's going to be a little metal retainer clip and a hold of that in place. So you could just take a flathead screwdriver and kind of start to work it free. When you work them free, there's really no special way to uh, get them down. Uh, I just kind of push in on the center tab there uh, on each side of it to release it. But once this is released, we can set it off to the side. On our intercooler shroud, this piece here, we're gonna have three plastic pushman fasteners. We'll get them removed. Just use your trim tool or your screwdriver to pop those out. Now we can remove the intercooler shroud, the whole assembly. So there's gonna be four bolts holding it in, two on each side that look just like this. You have one at the bottom, pretty easy to get to, but then there's one kind of buried up top and it's pretty tricky to get to from down here. So what you can do, start with this one or the bottom ones, take a 10 millimeter and pull it out. And then going in through the grill on the front, we can kind of push this and get access to the one uh, up top. And it's just a little bit easier to do it that way. So like I said, if you come up to this grill opening and you can kind of push that plastic out of the way, that other bolt, it's gonna be right there. You get a long extension in your socket, pull that out. And I already removed the ones from the other side. So at this point, we should be able to kind of carefully grab our shroud and work it uh, out from under the vehicle. Now we can trim out our lower fascia uh, air dam as well as the air dam for our intercooler. So there's a diagram of the instructions where you can mark and measure and, and, and uh, lay everything out there. So I've done that and being pretty thin plastic, I'm just going to use a multi-tool uh, to cut that out, but you can use a Dremel tool or cut off wheel or even a pair of snips with this. So go ahead and get that done. And then we're able to do the same thing with our lower part of our fascia here. Now we can remove some bolts on the side of her frame. And from this point on, anything we do to one side of her truck, we'll also do it to the other side, because it'll be set up the same way. So in our case, you know, every situation is gonna vary a little bit. 
because uh, they'll be set up a little different depending on what you got. So some of you may have these vertical frame brackets, some of you might have tow hooks, uh, and, and so on. Ours actually has everything. So uh, we have quite a few bolts to take off. We're gonna remove these two bolts, these two bolts, and this one. So these two are holding on our frame, vertical frame bracket. Those two are holding on our tow hook. And this one is just gonna have to get removed for our, um, our side plate on the hitch. So I'll start with this one. It's an 18 millimeter. And I'll take my box wrench to hold the nut on the other side. And get that stuff removed. I'm gonna hold on to this hardware too because some of it we will be reusing. Let me get that one out of the way. Then we can switch over to, I believe it is a 24 millimeter. So I socket, get these removed. Once you pull these out, this frame bracket should drop down. So we'll get that out of the way as well. And that leaves us with these two up here for our tow hook. And that one there, I'm going to put a swivel on because my impact will probably fit in there. I'm going to go ahead and get that pulled out. And I do suggest just leaving the frame hooks setting in there. Because if you have them, you're going to put them back in anyway. So leaving them in there at least gets them close into position for when we bolt them back down. Now we can grab our side plate here and, you know, refer to your instructions. Because like I said earlier, depending on what options and stuff you have up here, the hardware combination could be a little bit different. But in our case, we have a side plate. We have this... Uh, Little spacer that's gonna line up with those holes. And then what you can do is take these big bolts here. Just trying to hold everything up. Put those through. And it's just a big bolt and a flat washer on them. And those are gonna line up with those two holes there. So you'll push those through like that. And then for this hole here, you can take this smaller bolt and a flat washer, push that through. And then for these two here where our tow hook was, you're gonna take these big bolts, that kind of have the fine thread, and uh, put on a flat washer and run those through. And it might take some you know, finesse to get them lined up through the tow hook. But once you do, hopefully these stayed in place. These were the factory nuts on the other side. Um, if they popped out, you'll just have to reach up there and get them in, but those will just thread into these. So I will do my best to kind of work it, uh, work it around here and get it to go through the frame, our tow hook and out the other side. I went ahead, got our remaining hardware started on the uh, end of the bolt where it passes through the frame. So for these two down here, you just put on a flat washer, a split lock washer, and a nut. Pretty straightforward. Uh, just leave everything hand tight for now. And then the other one, that smaller bolt that we used, I just simply reinstalled uh, the factory nut that was on the original bolt. With both of our side plates now loosely installed, I went ahead and reinstalled our intercooler air dam the opposite way that we removed it. Uh, knowing what I know now, I probably wouldn't even have completely removed it to begin with. Um, I probably would have just popped them three pushpin fasteners out and trimmed it here, but uh, it is what it is. Either way, uh, we got it back in place and we got this trimmed out. Now with an extra set of hands, we can take our center section here and start to get that lined up with our side plates 
And once you do, you can take one of the bolts and a flat washer, and we're gonna put these through all five holes. And the weight of the center section alone should kind of keep things in place, because this is a heavy, heavy unit here. But once all those are through, we can come around to the other side and get the nuts started. Here's where our bolts come through. You're gonna put on a split lock washer and a hex nut and get them hand tight. I'm gonna use that same hardware combination for the, the rest of the bolts. So now with everything in place and hand tight, we can snug up all the hardware. And there's a particular sequence that uh, you wanna follow. And what I'm gonna do is do the bolts, you know, a couple bolts on this side, go over to the other side, do them, and kind of jump back and forth here first ones that you're going to do will be the ones that we're originally holding the tow hooks in. So these two up here, 24 millimeter socket. Take care of those. And I already did these up here on the other side, so we'll just move on. We'll then switch out to a 15 16 size socket and wrench and do these two. I'll go over to the other side, do those, and then we'll follow that up with tightening this one down, and then all these that are actually holding the center section of our hitch to the side plates. Now we need to come back with a torque wrench and torque all the hardware down to the amount specified in the instructions. And you wanna be sure to follow that same tightening sequence uh, that we just did. Once everything is torqued down, you can take your fascia or this lower portion here, slide it over the hitch, and we'll get it all lined back up and resecured the opposite way that we removed it. Once you have this part all secured, um, we can secure this portion. Since we cut it out, this could bounce around. So on the hitch, there's actually these little tabs and they give you an alignment tab here. So you can line those up and kind of sandwich this in and then take a pen and put a dot there, right? And so I did that on both sides and we'll come back with a quarter inch drill bit and drill through it. It worked really well. It was pretty much spot on. And then on each side of it, you can take one of these screws, all right, put that up through. And then on the inside, you're gonna take a flat washer and a nylon lock nut. I'll get both of these started and then we'll come back and snug them down. Once those are snug, um, they actually give you these little plastic covers that can fill the holes in the bumper. Uh, since our license plate frame won't be reused. So those just snap in and kind of clean up the look a little bit. And if you're ready to use your front hitch, great. Uh, if not, and you need a front license plate, they give you a, a bracket that goes into the hitch. You can attach a plate to it. It'll slide in and then uh, they even give you a pin and clip. So works out pretty well. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Eco Hitch front trailer hitch receiver on our 2021 Ram 2500.